Or you have to have the title of the government. I've only been doing this for years. It's because you remind. No, you <laughs> <don't have that laughs> I remind. I meant to be there. Let's change right quick. That's easy to do. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm here now. Who is this? That's yours. Take a look at it. All right, it is noon. We'll go ahead and start the meeting. Welcome to the noon edition of Toastmasters. Say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. This wonderful edition of Toastmasters will be. My apologies, I'm not ready. We will have a Toastmaster of none other than my friend, my boss, esteemed colleague, Mr. Toastmaster Pato Evans. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a lovely edition of Toastmasters here at the Department of Health. So glad everybody could come out today. Oh, so All right, I think we're going to start this nice Toastmasters meeting off with our grammarian. And then, well, okay. Do we know who our grammarian is today? Well, it was supposed to be, uh, uh, uh. Oh, <laughs> The word of the day is a grammarian? All right. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have the grammarian, uh, Mr. Scott Gann, will come in and give us the word of the day. Word of the day. It's going over in our office completely, all around. Communication. Communication. Toastmasters is here so we can learn how to communicate. We are better speakers, presenters, and overall more educated when we come to Toastmasters, right? So communication is one of the critical infrastructure that typically breaks down an office. Wouldn't you agree? We have that problem. Everyone has that problem. ADA sometimes has that problem. We have a whole department that is just anything but communication. So today, I want you to use communication as the topic and any sub words you can think of that goes with communication, use them. Mr. Toastmaster. Great job, Scott, as usual. Today, I will work on my communication as Toastmaster. And I'm going to start that communication, communication, excuse me, by introducing our Toastmaster Minute, who will be given by none other than distinguished Toastmaster, Philip Borden. Good morning, good afternoon. There is no substitute for communication. That is one of the hallmarks of Toastmasters International. Just to give you a little reminder that as wonderful as Health Masters is, there's more to your Toastmasters experience than just coming to Health Masters meetings and being part of the Health Masters Club. You are part of a 92 and a half year old, very time tested, time proven, professional organization that is worldwide with many different clubs and many different districts all over the world. One of the proven and carefully designed hallmarks of Toastmasters International is to have club officers, for each club to have club officers. Those have been carefully selected for certain roles, first of all, to make sure that the club has what it needs to succeed throughout the year, that there's foresight, that there's planning, that there's management that goes into everything that needs to be taken care of for the club to succeed throughout the year, there's another very intentional reason 
for having club officers and that is for you as an individual, for your individual growth, for your individual experience in Toastmasters. It's more than just showing up, saying I hope I'll get to hear a good speech, learn something, get to criticize someone and go back to my office. It's about being, it's about your own personal growth, finding something that you can do based on your skills and experience, maybe something that stretches you a little bit, gets you out of your comfort zone a little bit. It's all carefully designed and the how the Toastmasters members who just want to show up at meetings and never want to be club officers will never know what they are missing by missing that experience. It's that time of year when we're talking about club officers for next year. If you haven't thought about it, I want to encourage you to think about how you can come on board as a club officer. You won't find a better club. You won't find a better, more supporting group of people to join, to gain that experience. I just want to encourage you to consider that and to look around at the people who are here, the people who are not here, at who you think would do a good job in those roles as that information continues as we learn more about those details. Mr. Toastmaster. Philip always does a great job and he made me realize something. Communication comes in a verbal form and nonverbal form. You might not have realized when he mentioned to come to Toastmasters and hear a good speech, he kind of looked over at me and was like, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Thank you for that nod. Thank you for that nod. Next, I'd like to uh, bring up our Toastmaster Minute. And I don't remember when we exactly changed moving this to before the speeches. Whoever came up with that idea, it was tremendous. Table, it, topics. table topics, excuse me, table topics. Thank you. That's been great. I think we've gotten more people involved, and we're really getting some good responses instead of having it at the end where everybody's kind of burnt out and just watching the clock. So for our table topics, without further ado, the incomparable Brandy Roberts. Good afternoon, everyone. Our table topics for today. My first question. You just ran over the flagpole in the front of ADH. What would be your explanation and your excuse to Dr. Smith? Miss Antoinette, while you up here taking my pictures with your phone. Thank you. What would be your excuse to Dr. Smith? You just ran over the ADH flagpole in the front of the building. Topics Master, I was thinking about that very same incident as I parked right next to the director when I came in and I said, I do not want to run over the director's car. Uh, did you say the flagpole? <laughs> Both of them are the same. The flagpole of the car, it's all the same to me. It is a biggie. What would I do? I would jump up and I'd say, ah! Oh my God, what a way to start Monday. If I run over anything, any object, that's not the way to start Monday. Oftentimes, Toastmasters, we get in a hurry to get to work on Monday. I know we do. We're all excited. We've been off two wonderful days over the weekend, and we are excited about getting to work. We begin to dress real fast. And we grab whatever we need, and we know that we're coming to a great Toastmasters meeting. So, of course, we get that manual out. We be sure, we, we make sure we have the manual in hand when we come in. We are sure that we have looked at the agenda. And off to work we go. And here we are, driving, thinking about, oh, what a great toy class I'm going to have today. Let me whip it in here real quick. And I didn't realize when I was driving the big car, not the small car. <laughs> Bam! What happened today for Antoinette? Amazing Toastmaster Antoinette. And we had this calamity to happen. Oh, goodness. Dip, 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 dip. Stay form. I need you. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the pictures taken. Click, click. And I put on, of course, a very big smile so that the, the crying and all of the inside hurt would not show Toastmasters. It is my honor to tell you today that you can get through this and remain a great Toastmaster of Health Masters. No one will know about it but us. 
<laughs> Madam Topic Master. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> For our next table topic, a coworker has accused you of stealing their lunch from the refrigerator. He walked by your trash can and he see the slim chicken package in your trash can. He coming to your office about to fight. So how would you resolve this confrontation, Dr. Mukasa? <laughs> He's seen the bag. <laughs> Safe at ADH and lunch. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters. Theft brings a conflict. <laughs> I have my packet lunch, packed lunch. You have an empty stomach. <laughs> there goes the conflict. How do we resolve it? <laughs> I think it's not a criminal issue if it's a lunch deal. Fearless communication. Fearless communication. Tell the truth. I was hungry and somebody gave me something to eat. How about that for a start? I would rather have it as a joke than a fist confrontation. Talking of a passive mukasa. <laughs> I don't know how far it would take me, but we're talking about communicating peace here. I believe it will work. Next time I'll tiptoe and make sure that labeled lunch from John Doe, I'll pick one as a revenge, peaceful revenge. And at the end of the day, this will prevail because I had a chance to share conflicts at Toastmasters. Madam Toastmasters. Thank you. <laughs> Topics Master. Our last table topic. Has everybody heard about the new ACA bill that's being repa repealed and replaced in the office? So a new pre-existing condition has been added. Anybody who eats fried chicken as one of our new pre-existing conditions that has been added to the list. So how would you feel about this and why, Miss Joyce Biddle? <laughs> Who started laughing? Hello, hello. First of all, y'all know <laughs> fried chicken is like one of the most favorite foods in the South. Now you know that's a prayer against existing for everybody in this room. Who don't like fried chicken? Raise your hand. Nobody raised their hand. So of course it's a pre existing condition for all of us. <laughs> Just yesterday, I, that, that was my contemplation when I was leaving church. I was thinking, should I fry chicken for dinner? But it wasn't what I had planned. But I was sitting there, I was warring with myself when I was driving home from church. That's not what I had planned for dinner. But I was like, but you know, fried chicken show would be good. It was my pastor's fault because, you know, it was pastor's anniversary yesterday when he was giving his remarks at the end. He kept talking about chicken. I was going, why is he talking about chicken? That's not what I have planned. He trying to change my mind. And you know fried chicken is not good for you. It depends on if you fry it yourself. If you fry it yourself and you use the right ingredients to fry it, it will be good for you because I do that. I don't use those. I don't use lard like they did back in the day when I was growing up. <laughs> I use olive oil and things like that to fry my chicken with. And it actually tastes good. Olive oil. 
or corn oil. If you use corn oil or olive oil, it actually tastes pretty good. And you know, I use good seasonings. So my fried chicken is good. My pre-existing condition, fried chicken, best thing in the world. Madam Topics Master. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, who participated in our topic. <laughs> Table topic, I'm sorry. Thank you. You know, I might be in the minority, but back in the day, cooking with lard, fried chicken, that's how you got women got the thickness. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't going to go on there. I'll just say fried chicken matters. Fried chicken matters. Just, just, you know, make skin good. Just, oh, fried chicken. Anyhow, I digress. The next we want to talk to our first, uh, have our first speaker come up, and they're going to be uh, speaking out of the speeches by management, uh, communicating change. This is going to be by Miss Antoinette Mitchell, and her speech is, move over, a change is coming. Move over, a change is coming, Miss Antoinette Mitchell. were this computer, what would I do? Let me see now. I don't want to save it. I want to go to the PowerPoint show. Slide. That's not the electric slide either. All right. Madam Topic Master, uh, Mr. Toastmaster, Madam Topic Master, fellow Toastmasters, I am here representing management today. I am so glad that so many came and attended this great meeting that we're having today. I want you to know that we are having a group of new employees to come into the workplace. June 1st, Monday morning, you will have 15 new employees. These new employees are called Gen X the Gen X employees. They are graduating this weekend, May 13, 2017. This is going to be their very first employment that they have ever had. And guess where they will be assigned? Right here in your work unit. Don't be so excited about it. It is going to be good communication. The news is, that these new employees have a question about being called Gen Z. Some of the employees tend to think that they were named G Gen Z because Z is the last letter in the alphabet. Is it because their big concern is about paying student loans? They're just graduating, so now they've got a lot of loan money to pay off for their education. As manager, I have heard some people talk about the interaction between the young generation working in the unit with you. I am here to clear it up today. Generation Z, they are the digital natives. That's their characteristic. You will see them with their smartphone in their hand. They are the generation that knows all the information. They carry around the smartphone, and they know information before we can get home and turn on the evening news. It is 24-7 news while we are sleeping at night. Even though we told them as children, and as parents, we told them as children, go to bed and go to sleep. But they decided to see what else was on that smartphone. Yes, it is true that some of you have worked for years and years on a straight 40-hour work week. Yes, it is true that you've been very loyal to your supervisors and your bosses, working 8 to 5 every single day. Yes. You have kept the same computer for the past seven years. <laughs> and perhaps some of the new employees may be your children or one of your other in-law relatives. 
This means that this new change of employees coming in, the Gen X, will affect all of us. We are going to look at some more characteristics of the Gen X. Let me tell you, are you listening closely? We've already determined that they are digital na natives. As a matter of fact, in 1995, when they were born, they have been coined as being the digital diapers. <laughs> digital born diapers in the nursery, right then and there. They do not wear wrist watches like we do. When we graduated, that was the graduation present, a wrist watch and a suitcase. Get your pack, get it going. You can't stay here, where you going? Go to the army or go to the college? These digital diapers born in 1995, they're independent in their survival mode. They don't have to ask you for help. They come in very independent. Don't you worry, supervisors. Very little mentoring will be needed for them to get them going. As we've said it before, they're going to come in with their cell phone and other devices in their hand. Let's look at ways that we can come together and we can get through this challenge. We want to learn better together, right? Yes, that's what I thought you would say. We are going to look for opportunities to learn from and about the Generation Z employees. Let us come together to learn what the Generation Z knows that we don't know. How about that? Let's make some exchanges with one another. I will exchange my seasoned work experience for the Generation Z's technology knowledge. The Generation Z has 91% technology skills. Aren't you waiting for them to come to your computers? Aren't you waiting for them to get that spreadsheet ready? Spreadsheet ready? They, they will give you a quick report at any time of the day. It doesn't have to be 8 to 5. It can be 9 to 4 or 9 to 3. Please note that this is the first time in history that the youngest person in the workplace knows more and is an authority on a very important issue that we deal with, and that is called hashtag, tash, uh, hashtag tash, technology. <laughs> I know you want me to say that again. Hashtag te technology. That's it. Tech, tech, technology. <laughs> We can exchange our patience with Generation Z for their quickness to find a solution. After all, they're coming in on June 1st to streamline all of the processes that we've had in place for 15 years. That's because Generation Z thinks we take too much time and overcomplicate stuff, looking at it over and over again. Let's just tap this button and get it going, says the Generation Z. Generation Z, they have another fear. They have a fear of performance, that they're not performing fast enough. Can you believe that? We're going to exchange some things in communication with each other. Generation Z has no problem with working a job online while working during the day. In our day, that was called moonlighting. And we wouldn't dare tell anybody that we were working at night. They may come out with some policy that we would have to abide by. This is the generational breakdown, just for your information. We are dealing today with the Generation Z, and they're also called the I generation. And I stands for information. There's a change coming about, and we want to be ready for this change. We want to work together and not apart. I was told that the newspaper is getting ready to stop coming. I was told that there would be no more letters in the mailbox for me when I got there from my precious grandmother, or from my mother. And that generation Z said, what is a letter? And then the other one with the smartphone said, what is a newspaper? <laughs> Let's all consider how we were once 
new in the workplace. Let's work this together and embrace change. Mr. Topic Master. Let's end this show. Oh, yeah, my paper. My oh, paper. okay. There you go. Thank you. Great job. Great job. <laughs> I've been doing poor communication. I have got to find out, Miss Antoinette, what ACB means at the end of your name. I thought it meant always cute, baby. <laughs> so at some point after that, we'll get together and we'll talk. Yes, uh, oh, yes. All right. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. All right, moving along, I'd like to bring up our speaker number two. Uh, this will be from the Entertaining Speech Project, my liege, if you will, and following my footsteps. Mr. Scott Gann will be speaking Rise to the Top. Rise to the Top, Mr. Scott Gann. Has anyone thought about what the top of the mountain is for you? The apex. What is your end goal? What is the top? When I say that, what do you start thinking? You probably start thinking maybe your career. Where do you want to end up? Do you want to end up in Nate's position? That's a good goal, right? It's a stretch for me. I'm not a doctor, but I'll go for it. Maybe it's your Christian life. Maybe it's your family life. Every one of us has a goal, has a pinnacle we want to reach. For me, I've reached it. I'm, I'm not satisfied. I'm going to reach another one. But for me, I've reached it. I want to take you back to 1999. A nice little smile, little cute boy running around, thinks he's all cocky, he's... 17 years old, thinks he's the man, right? That's me. That was me. I go into the local fire department. I was happy. I, I got to get to my goal. I wanted to be a fireman. But I couldn't be paid. I'm just a volunteer. So now I have a new, I have a new mountain I want to climb. I want to be a paid fireman. It's a good goal, right? Everyone, everyone likes a hero. We're all happy. So I go to the fire academy great. There's about 90 departments that hire in the state of Texas. I think I can get a job. You're not EMT. Well, now I have a whole different mountain to climb, so I'm going to climb it. I go all the way and I go get my paramedic. I climb a mountain. But you know, every time you climb a mountain, it's never easy, is it? There's challenges along the way. The path is never smooth. So I'll start climbing this mountain. And then I realized my body gives out. I tore my ACL three times in the fire academy. I tear it twice doing my paramedic style academy. All is well. And I finally get the call. Bel Air Fire Department calls me in 2008. I've reached the top of my pinnacle. I'm at the top of the mountain again, right? August 12th, 2008. My crew responds. We go to a fire. It's great. I'm pumped up. We get to do a fire because that's what every fireman wants to do, right? We want to go put out fire. We run up the top of the building. It's Frost Bank, sitting downtown Houston. Guess what happens? Tear my ACL again. Except this time, I'm 12 flights up. Four firemen with me and someone I need to get out the top. Use the elevator. I love it. Can't use the elevator fireman though, right? Tough. They get me down. We go on. August 30th, I make the decision to retire. But I'm still a paramedic. I heal, get to do things, right? I go to Louisiana. Climb the pinnacle again. Offshore medic. Get to play doctor. It's all good. Get the call. My rig's being stacked. No work. Just like every other old person y'all probably heard, right? I bounce around a few times and I wind up in Memphis. Except this time is where I truly reached the pinnacle of my life. 
I moved with my wife and my 18 month old daughter. If you've never been to Memphis, I think everyone probably has, right? We love Memphis. It's great to go. It's hell to live. But I realized at that point, when I'm spending $250 for child care, I'm working 24-hour shifts and not getting to see my child. And when I came home into my wife's arms, and my child came and sat in my lap, that is what we do. That is the true pinnacle of life. So we have a decision to make. We come back home. Now for you, those of you who may not know, my wife and I are both from North Little Rock. We were both born in the same hospital, four rooms apart, four years apart, but we met and married in Texas. Crazy story. All that work around brings the mountain up. I'm at the top of the mountain, so I come home. And I wind up at the Arkansas Department of Health, of all places. Section of MS, feel pretty good, but there was something missing. We got the chance, Aaron and I have known each other for years, I got the chance to have a position open here, and we got to talk about it. For the first time in an 18-year career, in my marriage, and in my life, I can truly say that the pinnacle is reached. I get to work with some of the greatest people in the world. And I've worked all through the southern U.S. I get to go home every day to the wife that has gotten me through everything, and my five-year-old daughter, who definitely runs our house. My pinnacle may grow a little bit. I may want to move up. We never know. Positions may move up. We all may move up. But for me, I'm sitting here at the top of the mountain. I'm looking around, and I want each one of you to join me. This is Toastmaster. Awesome. You know what's really funny? Exactly four days and four years before Scott and his wife got married, we were married. That's how we know each other so well. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. No. I'm so proud of Scott. He, he's really come a long way, and I've, I've been able to see him grow uh, personally and professionally. And uh, it, it's an honor to get to work with him every day and uh, a privilege, and it's a privilege to work with a lot of people that I've met in the Department of Health. So uh, keep aiming high. Uh, good things will happen. It looks like that we do not have a third speaker today. I've seen in the email some people had other engagements. Uh, so we will move on now to the general evaluator portion of the meeting, and it will be by none other than distinguished Toastmaster Joyce Biddle. Good afternoon, everyone. We will start with our first evaluator. Our first evaluator is none other than distinguished Toastmaster Joyce Biddle. Joyce will be evaluating our first speaker, soon to be distinguished Toastmaster, Antoinette Mitchell. <laughs> Antoinette's speech is Move Over, a Change is Coming. Coming from the, what is the name of man? Speeches by Management, Communicating Change. Move over, a change is coming. I love this speech. She was talking about the Gen Z generation and how they've taken over change and all of that. She was an excellent speaker. She has a good speaking voice. She used notes a little bit, but that's to be expected for the subject she was talking about. She has good body language. She has vocal variety, and she followed all of the steps that was expected of her in this speaking manual that was before me. It asked if she was following the steps that was outlined, and she did follow the steps, and was there any improvements needed? None that I saw. And it also asked, was the audience 
moved by what she was saying. And I'd say yes. We all understood what she was talking about. And she laid it out the way it needed to be laid out. And I and they also wanted to know if we were benefited. And I said yes, because we all know that information is changing. And we all are benefiting by that new information exchange. Because communication is the new way of life. <laughs> the new communication, the information highway. Madam General Evaluator. Our next evaluator is none other than Toastmaster Charlie Simpson, who will be evaluating. Who is evaluating? Me. Scott Dan. Scott Dan. <laughs> Thank you. Madam General Evaluator. I had to take a while to figure out what position you were in. Scott, <laughs> rise to the top. This was the entertaining speech, which is to select a topic, organize your speech, have a good time delivering the speech, and being able to evaluate different components. The first question was, what indicated to you that the audience was entertained? I really enjoyed the volume of your speech. It was just kind of at a, a good tone and volume that just kept the audience thinking, like, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? So good volume used throughout the speech. Briefly describes the talk, describe the talk's organization as you perceived it. Had the opening, body, and conclusion. Good job there. How effective did the speaker use vivid descriptions? And any of those to, or, or stories, great job with this one. The vivid pictures that you painted with having my wife hold me, daughter coming to sit on my lap, those types of descriptions really help paint the picture of the story. Going up 12 flights of stairs and having the ACL torn, good job in that area. How did the conclusion relate to the rest of the talk? Good challenge for the audience to reach the top of the mount mountain with you. However, I'm sitting there thinking, am I at the top of my mountain? Or how much further do I need to go to reach the top of his mountain? So I would probably think of maybe some way to tie in where your, your intro, which was the question, are you at the top of your mountain, with being able to maybe even evaluate where else would you need to go in order to get there. How could the speaker improve just in that particular area? What would you say the speaker's strongest asset in speaking entertainingly? The, the tone. Your stories really helped the audience, helped me think, what's going to happen next? Is he going to tear his ACL again, or is he going to rescue this person on the 12th floor and bring him home safely? So good job in that area. Madam General Evaluator. going to hear from our grammarian, Scott Gann. It's a little unfair. I did not use the word of the day. My apologies. The word of the day was communication, and I have counted eight times. I did not write down who said what, I'm sorry. The filler words, grammar, um, there you go, ding, someone ding me. And the ahs, the oohs, I know I use so, so many times. So I'm going to count myself about 13 times, just to be fair. Postmaster Roberts, once, one so, that's it. Leonard, my apologies. Did I use any you did not, and and I'm stealing your thunder, so I need you up here. <laughs> Thank you, Joyce. Joyce, Scott. This was silent communication. 
from the other counter. No ding dings. I didn't want that distraction. We did have some saws. Just master Aaron. So and the combination with and Toastmaster Antonite, Toastmaster Brandy, Distinguished Toastmaster Joyce, and, and Charlie had a few saws. Sorry for not dinging you. This was silent communication. Wait a minute now. Who got my paper? Okay. What were we at? All right. That was an interesting grammarian uh, counter report. <laughs> we'll move on to the timers report from distinguished Toastmaster Philip Borden. Thank you. In the timers corner today, we started things off with a volunteer word of the day presented by Scott for 38 seconds. I put the minute back in Toastmaster Minute at 2 minutes and 42 seconds. For our table topics, Antoinette, 202, Leonard Mikasa, 133, Joyce, 158. Our two speeches were both five to seven minute speeches. Antoinette's was 758, Scott Gans, 607. Our evaluations, Joyce, a minute 43, Charlie, 224. Grammarian's report, I think the grammarian part of it was a about 47 seconds. Leonard Mikasa's on counter part of it was about 42 seconds. Timers report 49 seconds, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you. Now for my comments on the meeting. The meeting was pretty well done. We had to fill in some spots. That's okay. I do have one comment for Leonard, and I think I've told Leonard this before. When you are speaking during table topics, you are to address the audience and not the table topics master. Because you do that a lot. When you're talking, you talk to who you're, you turn around and, and face whoever's in charge instead of addressing the audience, and that's not what you're supposed to do. That's something you have, there's something you have a habit of doing and you need to correct that. But other than that, we have had a good meeting. We're few in number, but we need to encourage all of our other members to come to this meeting. And I don't know where all our new members are. None of them are here today. You're not a new member. You are new, but you're not new. You're new from last year. I'm talking about all the people that I recruited for this year. You're from last year. I'm talking about all the people from this year that I just recruited, that just joined. The people that just joined this year. Oh, that's right. I'm getting you confused with somebody else. That's why. That's right. I'm thinking about, I'm thinking you're somebody else. That's why. Dr. Susan Weinstein, here since December, Department of Health. Um, I was a Toastmaster member, but it was in Oklahoma, and it was about six years ago. So I'm starting fresh, because a lot of this is just coming back to me as I come to the meetings. But I'm proud to be a member of this group. I'm glad I joined, and I've been very entertained. Look forward to doing some speeches and active member. Mm -hmm. 
And y'all do know that's out of order, because that really should have been done by Scott when Scott came up. <laughs> but I'm just saying. Okay. Anyway. No, okay. Anyway, uh, back to where we are. I'm going to now turn the meeting over to the presiding officer, our president, Scott Gann. Welcome. Welcome. I'm, I'm glad that you are here. We're usually more organized, I promise. <laughs> Some days. <laughs> Not today. We're glad you joined. We, we really need to get the other eight people in your class with us. If you know them, tell them that they should, they should join us. We like this. Have you been assigned a mentor? I haven't. I have not. You will get a mentor. Hopefully, they, hopefully it's not me this time. I'm volunteering, though. It's been a great meeting, I think. I don't have any new business. I do. I will say this. Do we? Saying I'm, this, this is how far behind I am. We have new business. What's it? This is what we love to hear. Bill, why don't you come on up? Thank you. Just a quick update on the process of club officer elections. We are planning to hold the elections and actually vote next Monday. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, hearing no rebuttals. Next Monday, a week from today, be here. If you see someone who's not here, a member, be sure to invite them. There, I'm sure there'll be emails. I do want to quickly mention that there are really two ways to do officer elections. One is to open the floor for nominations. Anyone and any, everyone can nominate themselves or someone else. It's all transparent. It's all open. The other way to do that is to form a committee and have that committee go do the legwork and then present their recommendations to the club. We have found a third alternative without even trying what we're ending up doing is somewhere in between those two methods. I will read for you the nominations that we have so far. What you are about to hear is in no way final. You can nominate yourself. You can nominate someone else. However, we do have a nominee from the club for each one of the seven officer roles. If we have more than one contestant Next Monday, we'll have some little two or three minute campaign speeches. Get up on a tree stump and tell us why we should vote for you. We'll do that next Monday. Here are the nominations we have so far. For president, we have a nomination for Antoinette Mitchell. We have a nomination for me, Philip Borden. For vice president of education, Scott Gann has been nominated. For vice president of membership, Jonna Jacobs, Adrian Duncan, and Dave Rudney. You'll hear some of these names more than once. The way we do the voting is to start with, to do the officers in order. If someone gets elected for a position, obviously they're not eligible for another position. If they don't win that election, they are eligible for another role. For Vice President of Public Relations, Brandy Roberts and Antoinette Mitchell have been nominated. For Secretary, Patricia Minor and Joyce Biddle. Treasurer, Aaron Padua Evans and Joyce Biddle. For Sergeant at Arms, Leonard Mikasa. Again, think of yourself, someone else, who would like to fill any of these roles. Think between now and next Monday about what you can do for yourself and for our club. I'll turn things back over to our meeting presider. Officer elections are very important. I've had the honor to, to sit in this position by proxy since there was no one else. So see, you just need to be here. We really need as many people here in a full house. So anyone you can invite, bring some guests. 
they can see what it's all about. Maybe they want to join. You don't have to have a quorum. What is our quorum number? Well, we, at 11. Fifty percent or more. So we need twelve. Okay, so we need to yank some ears. Make sure, make sure we're, we're here next Monday. No, I would love to get. Very important. Sounds good to me. However you want to. Okay. Yay. Lots of speeches. I love it. My suggestion is we not have speeches next week. We just have the just election. Just do the elections. I'm okay with that. Everyone else okay with that? Raise your hands. Okay. Absolutely. It's a fried chicken. Fried chicken. We're bringing fried chicken next week. That's it. Thanks. That's my cheating day. Any other topics? Okay. If that's the case, this meeting's adjourned.